How can mindfulness change your life? Well, sometimes it's tricky on a personal level to find, say that it's exactly this causes that. But one thing I know from years and years of practice is that when I meditate regularly, when I do my different mindfulness practices regularly, life just goes a lot smoother. When I don't, life is, for lack of a better word, more jagged, a lot more caca happens, things blow up in my face, and, and, and it just does not flow as well. Uh, and I've seen that direct correlation over and over again, year after year. But there is a lot of research on how mindfulness can affect your life. So let me share some of that with you, some of the things that it can do. First of all, it can reduce stress, anxiety, and burnout. It is being shown to do that. Mindfulness-based cognitive therapy has been shown to reduce the risk of relapse or recurrence for people with a history of recurrent depression. People who practice mindfulness regularly uh, can grow, develop a, an increased self-awareness and self-worth and empathy. There can be improved relationships and relationship satisfaction. And part of the thing is, the reason for this is when you're mindful, uh, you're, you're more present and you're not getting engaged in things, you just notice things. So quite often, the people that we're close with, they're the ones who can really push your buttons. And if you improve your ability to be mindful, your buttons are not as exposed. They don't um, trigger as easily. You notice them uh, doing those behaviors that would normally push your buttons, but you don't have that automatic response after a while. So what else can it do? Well, with uh, women, it's uh, shown to have improved sexual function and well-being. Uh, and also, there's a lot of uh, benefits in the workplace. Uh, there's a, a lot of studies that have shown how mindfulness impacts the workspace. And let me share some of that with you. Uh, first of all, people are often able to stay more focused. There's improved relationships within teams increased personal efficiency and productivity, increased ability to counteract stress, increased attitudes of corporate and social responsibility can surface, and an increase in employee resilience. Now, if you look specifically at leaders, there's other studies that show some significant changes for leaders with the development of mindfulness practice. Some of these include that they're better able to think strategically and to deal with complexity, improved decision making, improved creativity. So th there are all sorts of uh, benefits to mindfulness that are all over the map. But the real challenge to me is to look at what are the benefits that you are looking for. And what that comes from is starting to look at what's happening in your life that's making you look at mindfulness or think about mindfulness. How many nights do you spend up tossing and turning your head, going back and forth, second guessing yourself, worrying about things? How much sleep do you, you, do you lose? How is your productivity impacted because you're worried, you're stressed about all different things? And again, second guessing, thinking about things, doubting yourself. A lot of imposter syndrome can come from that overthinking. Uh, you know, wh where are you thinking or juggling things that you feel like, oh my God, I can't keep juggling all this. Something's going to fall. To take an inventory of your life and say, what is it that I need to change? What are the benefits I need? Because I can go through all sorts of benefits of mindfulness, 
but what is it that would make the biggest difference for you? And knowing that, that will help you determine what type of mindfulness practice might help for you. Because it, there's different ways to step into mindfulness. The other thing is to think about where you already are doing things that may be a mindfulness practice because it's not what you may think and notice how that's impacting your life and as, as you see that see how can you expand that you know runners often talk about um, a runner's high well that's often uh, around this whole area of mindfulness because you're so present they're not going their heads aren't going like crazy they're just there in the flow of the run I, I had a friend of mine who did the Boston Marathon and he was telling me about how uh, they talk about suicide hill in the Boston Marathon and that's the thing that kills everyone and I think it's about two-thirds or three-quarters the way through and he's going along in the marathon and uh, he gets to this point where there's these, I, I think this group of Japanese people with these massive drums and they're, you know, in the audience that's to the side and they're just beating boom, 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 boom. And he start, finds, he starts running to the beat of that drum and uh, he just keeps going. And after a little bit, he, he turns to someone and said, where's the suicide hill? Uh, you know, that everyone talks about. And the guy looks at him and said, you just did it. And he had gotten so much into the presence of that beat, he didn't even notice the hill. And the fact is also he trains in an area here where there are a lot of hills that are, that are you know, quite a bit more challenging probably than that. But he didn't realize that at the time. But that that tool of those drums beating brought him into that state of mindfulness that got him through that that hurdle without even consciously thinking about it. It was just get into the cadence of that beat. So, you know, where is it that mindfulness would benefit you? What is it that's that's out of balance for you? And there's a lot of different practices that you can get into. You can, you know, you can explore meditation. You can explore breathing exercises. You can explore yoga. Um, there, there's so many things. For me, dance is a uh, mindfulness exercise. So it sounds crazy if I'm doing a crazy fast j jive or a, or a, um, a, a you know super fast salsa, but I have to be completely present with my partner and with the music in that moment because as a lead I'm choreographing in the moment and I've I know many nights when I've felt exhausted and all sorts of stuff running through my head and I either had a dance class or I was supposed to go out dancing and I was thinking eh, do I want to I'm tired and I go and I come back so invigorated because all of that stuff that was weighing me down before is gone because when I'm on the dance floor there's no space for it I have to be completely present that those seven chunks have to be completely focused on my partner and the music to be able to do all that work so um, you know in that in that case where I was exhausted before I came back that much more energized because my mind not just because I'd done exercise but my mind was lighter and it just let me sleep better Okay, so it's really to notice where is your life feeling most out of balance? And then what's the change that you want from that? That's going to help you determine uh, what uh, mindfulness practices to start to bring in. There's so many things that you could do. And that's what's so exciting about this is this, the, there's... there's a whole host of things which I'll touch on more during this series. Not everyone will work for everybody, but there's going to be some that are going to work amazingly for you. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll be uh, covering a number of these as we go forward. The other thing is if you are wanting to start to explore mindfulness, 
<clears throat> one of the things that I've done since the pandemic is make my full Mindfulness 101 program available for free. And it introduces you to a whole range of different practices, including some Jedi mind tricks to shut off that self-talk and a whole lot of other things. All you have to do is go to saynotostress.com and you can access it for free. Uh, so please, if, if it's needed, I know there's so much need out there now and there will be for some time. Uh, please feel free to access it and uh, make the most use of it. Thank you.